The hardest part of research is probably deciding on what research method to use. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, my name is Shivobi and I'm an ISA finalist interested in microbiology and environmental engineering. And today I want to talk about how to choose the right research method for your research projects. What are the main research methodologies? So we have experimental, correlational, and observational. And the importance of choosing the right method is because it'll help analyze and interpret any data you collect. So the first we're gonna look at is the experimental method. We use this method when we want to see the effect of one variable on other variables. And our main components for this method is independent variable, dependent variable, control variables, and the use of random assignment. Now the strengths of using the experimental method are that you can establish a cause and effect relationship between variables, and you have a high level of control over the variables. Now some cons to using this method is that it doesn't reflect real world situations and there can be ethical and practical limitations with using this method. Now we have the correlational method and this is when we look at the relationship of variables without altering them in any way. Now the key features are the positive and negative correlation and finding of the correlation coefficient. Now compared to experimental, the next two correlational observations are probably harder to understand. And here's an example for correlation. So let's say you have an experiment and we're looking at the relationship between technology use and mental health. Now let's say we look at a teenager who uses the technology for a large amount of time and their mental health is lower. So if we can imagine this as the technology use increases, their mental health decreases. And this is actually a negative correlation since there's a decrease as there's an increase of one thing. Meanwhile, a positive correlation is when both of them are increasing. So let's say this student has more technology to use, their mental health increases and therefore it's a positive correlation. Now, what are the strengths of using correlational method? You can identify a relationship between variables as shown in my example. Um, and they're also useful for variables that you cannot manipulate. Now, weaknesses to this um, type of method is that you cannot establish a causation since you're not controlling the variables. And this can also be prone to confounding variables. Now we have our observational method, which is similar to correlational research since you don't actually manipulate the variables, but also you don't really focus on comparison. The types we have are naturalistic, participant, and structured. An example that you can think about is the effect of river's health over a few years. Now, a strength of observational research is that it provides data in a natural context. For example, going back to my example of the river's health, you don't actually change anything that the river has and you just observe it over the few years and you can actually see the result in a natural context since you're not affecting the river in any way. And this is also good for seeing behavior in situations that are unethical or impractical to manipulate. For example, you can't manipulate a patient's medication, so observational method is actually good for this type of research for patients. Now, weaknesses is that you cannot determine cause and effect since you're not imposing any type of variables. And this can also cause a observer bias and lack of control over variables. So how do you choose the right method? First, think about the nature of your question and also some ethical constraints that you might have. For example, what you're allowed to do morally. For example, you can't just test any drug that you create with a human. And then think about whether you want something in a natural or controlled setting. Now, here are some uh, examples that you'd like to look at. For example, for determining a casualty, you would use experimental. For exploring relationships between variables, it would be correlational. And to, for understanding behavior in a natural setting, you would choose observational. What if you feel that your idea fits in more than one method? Then you should think about combining methods or running two experiments on one topic by using different methods. This is a good idea since it allows you to cross-validate and discover new findings in your research. So here are some final tips I have for you. Make sure you're clear about your research idea and goal so you're not confused on which method to use. And it's also, to, it, it's also very important to understand any type of limitations you have each method. And it's also important to consider combining methods for a better understanding on your research topic. Thank you, and I wish you all the best in your research.